This is a little bit of a um, more obvious example because obviously we're very different people. Again, mustache, no mustache. Um, but it will help you guys, especially when we break out, and then also just long term, is look at different people's structures who actually have the exact same height. Same height, you can have different leg, torso, femur lengths. And it's those ratios that will play into how well you can squat, how well you can effectively take your quads, your glutes through as much of range of motion as possible, and whether or not you're going to be able to perform certain movements and have those muscles being your weak link or having your lower back being the weak link or other areas being the weak link. Put your feet on either side of that. So we're taking the exact same stance, just like that. Yeah, okay. And just hands on your shoulders and let's just squat down as low as we comfortably can. Okay, now it may not be as obvious from the front, so let's go to the side as well. Face the, uh, face that. Don't face me, I don't want to look at you. <laughs> and squat. Bang. Now, a couple of things are going on here. Okay, my ass is like rubbing the ground at the moment. I'm leaving a little stain on the ground. He's very far from that. How upright is my torso compared to his torso? Okay, how rounded is my back compared to his? About the same. Okay, I'm maybe a little bit rounded under, so maybe I should go a little bit higher to around here-ish. But still, very significant difference there. Okay, and even still, my heels are touching the plates. He's cheating. Like the cheater that he is. So come back up again. Put your heels next to that, actually touching. There you go. Yeah, now squat. The consistency. Okay. So, what's happening? Does he have tight hip flexors? Does he have shitty ankle mobility? You might be able to say that. Okay. So let's have a look at ankle mobility first. Ankle mobility is going to be a function of how much dorsiflexion do you have? How much can you bring that knee past your toes or at least forwards as possible? I drifted forwards. As far forward as you can. Okay. We're roughly the same with ankle mobility. I'm a little bit better, but not a lot better. Okay. Because my ankles are quite cementy. So ankles, not a big difference. So it's not that. Hips, you might be able to make that argument as well. But let's take another look at this from a slightly different angle. Go into that squat again with your heels and face the, face the wall over there, the naughty corner. Okay, now I'll squat down again. How confident are you putting a barbell on this guy's back? Because where, like, where's what's loading the significantly here? It's a lot through the hips and the lower back. Okay, so let's see what we have to do to change his center of gravity to help him hit that complete ass to grass depth with an upright torso. Because it is possible. Okay. It is? Yeah. See what happens. Use me. Okay. Completely upright as much as you can, obviously. There'll be a little bit of dip, but that's fine. Squat down until your hamstrings touch your calves. I got you, I got you. Come down even more, come down even more. Okay, great. So you can do that, right? Do you see what the issue is? If there was an, a bar on his back, what's he going to do? If I was not here, <laughs> he's going to fall over. It is physically impossible for him to hit that same range of motion that I do with the same stance in an upright torso. Why is that? His, his hips are mobile enough. He, actually get, he can get that range of motion there, no problem. Probably even better than me. What's the difference there? It's how long this fucker is, his femur. Not his whole leg, which is why some tall people can still have an incredible squat. It's more about how long is this relative to this relative to this. Coming to that again. Just grab onto me like that. Okay, squat down. Use me, use it, that's right. So because of his long femur, all of his weight is shoved all the way back there. And that's where it's up all over. So what can we do to help him? We can do two things. We can go a wider stance. <laughs> so grab onto me again. Cool, wider stance. And let, let, let the toes go wherever you want them to go. And he can use me, he's using me a lot less. He's still using me, of course. That's one thing. So maybe even go even wider. Okay. Now that's better. Okay, better, he's more upright. Because what has that done front to back to his femur? It's made it shorter. Yeah. Now he's more Asian, okay? <laughs> but come up for us. Remember that, memorize that stance, that width. 
face that away, just so you guys can see. That is quite a wide stance, okay? Like, if I'm out there as well, it's a little better for him because he's a slightly bigger person than I am, but if I'm out there and I'm squatting down, that, that's just going to feel fucking awkward. So there's a limitation to, like, well, there's a practical part to it of, yes, he can now squat ass to grass, but there's also at the compromise of what? What's the weak link going to be now? Potentially a lot of ligamentous stuff and effective tissues through his groin, through his hips, because of how wide his stance is now. Okay? But that actually may be pretty much pretty okay for him. Other thing we care about as well is what else can we do with his stance? We can go wider and also do what to his? Higher? Right, we can raise his heels. So, right. yeah. no, that, yeah, that'll do. Perfect. It's like it was designed for you. Right. Yeah. So he's in the exact same super wide stance. And now you can squat down. Realistically, I'd probably want him to come even narrower though. Because I don't want, and that's just me preference wise, what just looks kind of awkward. I want him a little bit narrower and he's still getting upright torso, same kind of range of motion. And that's as complex as it really has to get. Ideally, he should have more mobility through his ankles. But more mobility through his ankles is never going to overcome the fact that he's got super long femurs. I don't think no matter how much he works on his ankles, he's ever going to get to a point where he can hit that kind of depth barefoot with that stance. So we've got to keep that in mind. His body's always going to want to shift forward. Okay? So especially when we put a barbell onto his back, that's going to want to shift him even further into that position to more of that good morning squat. And that's further going to stress a lot more through glutes, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but also lower back. And that's probably what's going to be um, the thing that takes the grunt of the work. It doesn't mean injury, but it, just, but it does mean you finish a set of squats or your leg exercise and your lower back is pumped up and your quads have got nothing in them. They're like, they're, they're fine. Or your glutes are fine. Or you have really thick erectors, lower erectors, and you've got nothing else in the rest of your body. So I'm doing all the right exercises. I'm doing all the squats. Depends how you're doing them. And then there's also means the trainer saying, why can't you just get deeper? I've got to give you more hip mobility stuff. I've got to give you more ankle stuff. I've got to make you more and more mobile. I can't change his bones. I can't chop him up and make him more like me in terms of the length, not the Asianness. So the first thing you guys are going to start doing when we start breaking out is working out what your stance is, where your heel elevation is. The next thing is also understanding what happens when you put different implements onto different people's bodies. Okay? So how else could I actually help him with his squat position? Let's say you were staying barefoot and take your comfortable stance wherever you want. Okay, and just hands up here-ish and squat down. How else can I help him get a little bit deeper and maintain a little bit more of an upright torso without changing this stuff? Right, I can change his center of mass, his center of gravity. How can I do that? Right, different like loaded implements of some sort. So hold this goblet or just wherever you want, out there somewhere. This more in, even just distributes and hang out down there for us. You're fine. You did five minutes yesterday. You're good today. Still not ass to grass, but noticeably more deep, uh, deeper and more upright with his torso. Because now we've changed his center of gravity, his center of mass. So what's going to be better for him? A barbell back squat? Something more like potentially a front squat or also a, um, a safety bar squat as well? Because it's just, if you haven't, you haven't actually analyzed it, chuck the bar onto your back. Just step in that way and then walk out with it. So the reason why we use safety bars is if you go side on. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> 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 um, where is the load distributed? It's not on his on his back. It's slightly forwards, close to where you would have a front squat. That's why it's always easier to maintain more of an upright torso. So if all I had in the gym was free weights and no machines at all. I'd try for a guy like him, anybody with longer femur who have got stuck ankles um, and, a very, and a relatively shorter torso, it will be a front squat, it will be a safety bar squat. If I'm looking purely at building muscle mass and stimulating muscles, I would go a safety bar squat. Because front squat, you'll always fail here in your upper back before your legs fail. Your upper back, your thoracic spine stuff, the rhomboids, the traps, they will be your weak link. Not your lower back, because that's not bad, that's fine but the upper back stuff will be your weak link before your legs fail. So that's why this would be probably the next best option. But the greatest option, chuck that back in, 
well, yeah, don't kill anybody, including me. Um, the absolute best, best, best option is going to be what? Assuming we had anything in the world to work, to want to stress, stress, out, stress out his leg muscles. Yeah, machine stuff. Leg press, hack squat, Smith machine squats. Because they are direct ways for us to change his center of gravity, just like a free weight would. Okay, we can take him out of his natural biomechanics. That's part of why people are so against machines. Because like, oh, it's unnatural. It takes you out of your natural movement patterns. That's why we want to do that. Because your movement patterns suck. For squatting anyway, for leg training. If we want to grow his legs, because that's his random goal, we want to take him out of his default pattern, which is based on his bones, not based on his tightness in any structure, because he's not overly tight at all. He can go to places. Okay, and that's where we look at things like um, hack squats and leg presses. We're going to spend a little bit of time just going over there to the um, hack squat, because I think that's a good discussion to have as well for you guys. <laughs>